But that's this found the relationship between two little chains at the end of the capital chains at the end. So look at this is from uh, 13 point one five one to so uh, if you substitute this in the that uh, that will give you uh, the square of that Give me this is uh, this pi over two x, right? You get which of that, and then uh, J n, J uh, n plus one half, and square, oops. right? You just directly substitute in in the here, and. Then you, you substitute this in the here and this into here. You just imply the this is equals to the pi over two coming out to n plus one half square. And then you have the uh, x uh in the denominator and integrate Okay. And now the idea is that uh, this is this is for minus infinity and infinity. So if this if you want to directly use that you need to change it back to CO2 infinity and uh, Bayesian function actually is, uh, I mean, the, the old Bayesian function we usually define just for positive argument. Mm. Yeah, little, little J, this should be something similar. Somewhere, let's get to this one. It's not a little. It's a, it's a little bit not not apparent, but um, it's it's all coming. Say like uh, you can. I, I I didn't find that one, but uh, you, you can show that it, basically you want the symmetric property of, of little, this little j. I mean, uh, for capital J, you you. Hold, you you should define it as uh, just uh, uh, positive value. Uh, I mean, we can actually do it in complex way, but uh, uh, usually defined as positive argument. Uh, yeah, there's some. There's a corresponding. Uh, uh, relationship also in the capital J.
Maybe in the exercise. But let, let me just work on the little chain. Okay. From uh, 14.173, little chain x to m x. Let's uh, minus one x to the n. And then you have one of the x. Right, now to the end power. Right, uh, so we want to we know the symmetric property of this G, G of n here because we integrated from minus infinity to infinity, right? Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, we basically want to know uh, when you change x to minus x whether this is the same as j of n or or the minus of it. Either odd or even because of all these uh, sine x and x they are either odd and even. So sine x is odd, and then uh, divided by x make make this an even function, right? And then. Uh, the, we'll take a take a the derivative of an even function, then we'll make an odd function, but you divide it by x, right? And x is odd, so you make an a odd function, derivative of an even function, make an odd function, and then divide it by x, making an even function. So this operator make, will make it even function. And operate on n time, we still make it an even function. So all this uh, will make it even function. So the odd and even is make it's uh, determined by this x. Right? X is uh, is x is odd. So to the power n. So if n is odd, then this will be an odd function. If if x is even, that would be an even function. So that means uh, say n minus x. Is minus one to the n. Okay, so is it here? So this this is the, the, the equation I tried to, to look for in the textbook, but apparently they maybe not writing not writing it down. But uh, you can see that from like this representation, right? So. The j, j sub n, little j sub n function is odd and even determined by the, the order. Okay. Now we know that uh, j n is, whether j n is, uh, so we, so, so whether this is odd and even, the square will always be a, uh, be a even function. So therefore, when we write this to here, we first change the integration from zero to infinity and multiply by a factor of two and transfer this two in the denominator, right? And then uh, we can use this transformation to get uh, little j sub n to capital j sub n to make it complete. Okay, so uh, so that is uh, the first step. So that will make this in the form of this this one, right? We just uh, multiply by pi, and then this this one, right? Except that this is mu and nu. What you want is uh, both mu and nu is uh, equals to n plus one half. Okay, and we cannot directly change substitute to here because uh, that will make the the denominator is zero, also the numerator is zero, right? So what you do is uh, that will be equals to, let me see if I make space here. So you have a factor of pi first, and then you want to use this result 
this result we have factor two and divided by pound. And what you do is take the derivative of both of them with respect to, uh, so you want both mu and mu to be uh, equals to equals to uh, n over n plus one half. Uh, so you want us to take the derivative, and the derivative is like uh, you can take the derivative of both either mu or mu. But uh, uh, you can then take this with respect to mu and then set mu equals to mu equals to uh, mu equals to mu and then equals to n plus one half. So like uh, take the mu the mu of uh, so Divided by mu mu square minus uh, mu square minus mu square, and after the derivative is set mu equals to mu equals to mu. Okay, and. Um, so let's work out the derivative. So that equals to two times the pi, and that will give you cosine. Minus two, positive two, and then multiplied by the factor pi over two. That's this derivative. And the denoted in the numerator is just two mu, and then you substitute mu equals to mu equals to uh, n plus one half. Right. Let's see if we get the final result cancel the two, the pi over two, and mu equals to mu. That will make this zero. Cosine zero is one. Is that equals to pi over two and mu is uh, mu is mu equals to n. And which is two n plus one. Okay. Okay, so finally you got you got the you got the uh, required result.